next lesson, uh, we are going to cover uh, the steps that you use to create a pipeline. So this is really lesson two of the Quantopian pipeline tutorial. Uh, so we're going to create pipeline, run a pipeline, and um, let's get into it. So the first thing that you want to do is click this Get Notebook. Um, once you have logged into the Quantopian, uh, your own personal Quantopian account, um, once you click Get Notebook, it will redirect you to this uh, research environment. So this is basically what it will look like. I have cloned it from the pipeline tutorial lesson two. So this is really a Jupyter notebook. So let's go through these line by line. So the creating pipeline steps is the first one in the research environment is you need to import pipeline. So it's from quantopian.pipeline, you import pipeline and follow that by you need to actually define a function to create our pipeline. Um, you wrap our pipeline creation in a function, set up a structure for more complex pipelines that we'll see a bit later on. So this, for now, we're just gonna uh, leave it empty. Uh, this is uh, very simple. What it will do is basically extract uh, all of the assets in the Quantopian uh, stock price universe. Um, and in a new cell, that's uh, what you want to do is actually uh, instantiate this by my pipeline is equal to make pipeline. So this make pipeline refers to this function that you def we defined a bit earlier. So running a pipeline next, now that we have a reference to an empty pipeline, my pipeline, let's run it to see what it looks like. Before running a pipeline, we need to first import run pipeline, a research only function that allows us to run a pipeline over a specific time period. Because we are in the research environment, you do need to import this uh, in the IDE phase. You don't actually need to do this at all. So I'm going to run these first three cells. So run that, run that, define that and instantiate that. And next thing is to import the run pipeline uh, from the Quantopian research. So we're going to run a pipeline for one day. In this case, we are looking at 2015, May 5th, uh, and to run this pipeline and let's see what are the so-called output that looks like. Uh, that's the beauty of Python is that you can play around with it uh, just to actually figure out what actually comes out of it so you can actually play around with it. So, so the results uh, is the variable that we store all the data in. So you run pipeline um, using this. So run pipeline, which functions you're going to run my pipe, which is this one here and the period start and the end period. So we're going to just run one day. So 2015 May 5th to 2015 May uh, 5th. So that's just one day. So if we run that and if we run the result and this is basically the output. So this is all the data. So it's 8,241 assets in this uh, data frame. So it basically is empty as you can see all that we've extracted is just the stock price. Sorry, excuse me. All that we've extracted is just the stocks itself. So let's play around with this a little bit just to see if you actually make some variation what would actually come out. So if I change to May 6 um, from May 5th to May 6. If I just change this from May 5th to May 6. Let's see what will come out. So if you look at this and you will be able to see that May 5th, all this data came out uh, and May 6th, again, it's the same list of data. So I noticed that the number of rows that you have now has doubled. So in essence, that's really um, one way to figure out what kind of output a pipeline provides for you and it allows you to actually uh, play around with it to get a better uh, feel and intuition for it.